Good morning, Trinity. So much hustle and bustle this morning here um, at church for our 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Also St. Francis Sunday, um, patron saint of the animals and the environment. So we have a lot going on, um, including um, some unexpected furry faces in the congregation today. All are welcome, including our four-legged friends um, here in God's house. Um, if there is uh, an activity for younger kids in the church office, which is up these stairs um, and through our parish house all the way in the back, um, and uh, then we'll have something after church for older kids as well, um, as well as our blessing of the animals outside immediately following um, the service. So um, all of this is helpfully contained in your bulletins, um, along with everything else that you need for our worship this morning, except for your hymns, which are clearly marked and can be found in the red hymnals in the pew backs in front of you. So without further ado, please rise in body or spirit as you are able, and let us start with our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, now and forever. Amen. Together let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading for today is from Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 8. We'll read the psalm responsively with the congregation joining after the asterisk. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. So well, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you shall be mindful of him? The son of man that you should see him out. You have made him but little lower than angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in our paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from the epistle to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on, hall, on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is much more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you should care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. 
Now in, all, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. What a joy it is to be back in this pulpit, breaking open the word once again with all of you, beloved Trinity. We will get to the tricky bits of today's readings in a second. But first, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your love, your support, your generosity, and especially for your blessing upon my and Ben's marriage last weekend. As I said in my wedding vows, a younger Isaac never would have thought that the kind of love Ben and I have could be possible. And very much likewise, a younger Isaac would have laughed in utter disbelief that there could be a church, a Christian church, that wouldn't just accept me and my gay marriage, but actively and wholeheartedly celebrate it. But your faith and your love, dear Trinity, prove little Isaac wrong every day, and I will live the rest of my life in awe and in gratitude. Thank you. Now, if you were to flip the Book of Common Prayer near your hymnal to page 423, you would note that the title of our church's name for the ancient ceremony of uniting two people into one common bond, the celebration and blessing of a marriage, it's called. Celebration is obvious, but it's the blessing part that I want to focus this sermon on because it is a concept which suffuses so much of what we're up to at church this morning. At any wedding, including last weekend, it is the two people marrying one another who are the principal actors in that rite. Theologians mostly agree that the sacramental heart of marriage, the holy break in linear time, has really nothing to do with the priest or deacon at the front. But rather, the sacrament is when the couple face each other and make their vows in the name of divine love. It is them and God who make the marriage really happen. The officiant's job, then, is just to pronounce a blessing upon the now married couple in the name of God and of God's gathered community, the church. I love that idea of blessing. A few weeks ago, you may remember, we blessed the backpacks of our children to commemorate the start of a new school year. As I taught them then, there are three meanings to the idea of blessing. The first is that we bless with our words. In this way, a blessing is like a prayer. We express our best desires for the ones being blessed, health, life, and goodness. Secondly, we bless with our actions. 
when we help a person in need or improve a situation in some way, then we become a blessing to others. But the deepest meaning of what a blessing is, is what God, the source of all goodness and life and love does. In chapter one of the book of Genesis, which comes before our first lesson this morning, when God created the universe, God looked upon each part of creation and called it good. And when all was created, including human beings, the story goes that God blessed it and called it very good. And thus the third way to bless is to see something for what it truly is, as God sees it, as very, very good. When we can look on another part of God's marvelous creation, not as a means to our own ends, not as someone or something we can exploit, but as a microcosm of all of God's creative energy and innate goodness in itself, then we really, truly bless it. Today at Trinity is our blessing of the animals in honor of blessed Francis of Assisi, who saw the love and power of God written in the book of nature and not just in scripture. And we will bless in all three ways today. We will use our words to give thanks and to express our hopes for health and long life for the animals around us. We will be a blessing to the Northeast Animal Shelter in Salem with our large pile of pet supplies for our drive. And we will with grace look at each animal, even the stuffed kind that comes our way not just as a pet we own to give us companionship or be cute or sometimes test our patience, but as a creature which fully encapsulates the wondrous works of God. At the end of today's gospel reading, Jesus, the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, sees that his disciples are trying to keep little children away from him. In our day, this might strike us as an odd thing to do, but in Jesus's time, when around one in two children died before their 10th birthday, young children, while valued and loved, weren't exactly seen as fully human until they passed that milestone. Instead, they were often marginalized, pushed to the edges until they could take their useful place in adult society. But Jesus does see these little children for who and what they are in that moment, epitomes of God's goodness and love in creation, and he takes them into his arms and he blesses them. It is through this lens of God's blessing where his naming of all of us as very good can overcome every way that we humans marginalize one another. That is how we must approach the issue of marriage and divorce raised in the first part of today's gospel. As with children, Jewish marriages in Jesus's time were very different from how we see marriage in the 21st century. Rather than a union of two equal consenting adults motivated by love, marriage was primarily a means of ensuring families' economic stability and social privileges. It was also a patriarchal institution where the man's perspective and privileges were paramount and his wife was little more than his property. So as with the little children, Jesus is concerned here with people whose societal norms place on the margins, in this case, women, who had so few resources when their marriages went south as they did and still do. So Jesus wants to refocus the Pharisees and us on God's initial desire for marriage in the first place, as told in Genesis chapter two, for two people to become one flesh, or as our marriage liturgy puts it, the union of two people in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Now, just as in Jesus's time, there is this ideal 
And then there is the messy reality of all human relationships. In some marriages, divorce, while not exactly good, is the necessary thing for the two spouses to be better individuals, better parents, better members of their communities. I say this as someone whose childhood was deeply impacted by my own parents' divorce. So what Jesus is condemning here in his aside to his disciples is using the possibility of divorce as a moral and legal loophole simply to avoid accountability to one's spouse. As he does in other places in the gospel, Jesus is intensifying the requirements of God's moral law. In this case, adultery isn't just a man violating the property rights of another man, such as his wife's father or another woman's husband, but is a sin against the woman herself. Now, the irony of having to preach on divorce and its possible causes, possible causes one week after my own wedding is not lost on me, but it does provide the opportunity to come back to what it's all about, my friends, love. We human beings were created out of God's love in order to love him in return and to love one another. The limitless breath of God's love means that no matter how much we might screw up our most important relationships, even our marriages, there is grace and there is the possibility of reconciliation offered to each of us because the risen Christ is very much still with us. He welcomes us into his arms, no matter how alone and marginalized we might feel, and gives us his blessing by word and by action and by always looking upon us with love. And so, beloved, may we also bless the least, the lost, and the lonely in Christ's name. Amen. And now please rise in body or spirit as you are able. Together let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God, life and life, true God and true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are form three. Almighty God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, especially Emmanuel Church Braintree, Grace Chapel, Brockton, St. Stephen's Church, Cohasset, the Daughters of the King, and the Brotherhood of St. Andrew. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may humbly and truly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all priests, bishops, and deacons, especially our bishops, Alan and Carol, and our bishop-elect, Julia, and our priest Isaac.
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially in Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, Lebanon, and Iran. We thank you for all the blessings of this life, and we rejoice with Jack Summersby, Sebastian Monzon, and Sam Babagallo, who celebrate a birthday this week, and those who celebrate an anniversary. That all our lives may show forth your love. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or, or trouble, especially for the, those suffering in the aftermath of the Hurricane Helene, and also for Evan, Presiding Bishop Michael, Ellen, Timothy, Barbara, Miles, Marcia, Phil, Marilyn, Cam and Kate, Margaret, Dawn and Janet, Perry, Helen, Robert, Carol O, Chloe, David, Joan, Kate, Lily, Louise, and Sarah. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, especially Charles and Rose Bryant, in whose memory the altar flowers are lovingly given. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's grace. and welcome again to Trinity. Um, it is a delight uh, to have you all here for St. Francis Sunday. Um, now is the time in our service. You may be seated. Thank you. Forgot that part. Um, now is the time in our service for uh, some announcements and our vestry person of the day, Miles, is going to kick us off.
Once again, uh, I will be here with at least Dale Sherman and hopefully some others at 3.45 p.m. in the parking lot um, for the Maros Alliance Against Violence annual walk um, to combat domestic violence. Everyone is warmly welcome to join us. Um, in, on October 19th, um, which is two Saturdays from now, um, our bishop-elect, Julia Whitworth, who we've been praying for, um, will become our bishop diocesan um, at her consecration um, at Trinity Church in Boston. There is a watch party, um, that's at 11 a.m. on Saturday, October 19th. There's a watch party at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Linfield, um, if a drive into Boston feels a little, uh, not your speed right now. You can go um, to our friends in Linfield um, to watch the service and receive communion. Any other announcements for the good of the church? Then let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice. Remember that this is God's table and not our own. Everyone is welcome and everyone is invited to this table if you wish to encounter the real presence of God in Christ at this holy meal. For whatever reason you prefer to receive neither the bread nor the wine, please approach the altar rail as well and simply cross your arms over your chest to receive a blessing instead. But wherever you are on your spiritual journey with or towards God, know that you are welcome and you are invited to this table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. 
You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and to give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts that your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with Mary the God-bearer, Francis of Assisi, and all your people, into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for God's holy people. The body of Christ. blood of Christ.
Now please rise once more in body or spirit as you are able. And together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, beloved, receive this blessing. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.